Go official, Paula. It's 7.30, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna officially start this meeting. My name is Paula Bedard. I am the uh, board president for the Bike Walk Alliance of New Hampshire. And if you don't know what that is, that is your statewide biking and walking advocacy organization. I hope you check us out on our webpage or our Facebook page. We're really excited to present the first of our Bike Talk series. And as we move along, we may change the name to Bike and Walk Talk because we don't wanna focus just on bicycling issues, but also uh, walking issues. Our organization focuses a lot on making sure our communities are able to have active transportation options like biking and walking. So this is the first of our opportunities to have a fun chat. Um, and learn a little bit about uh, some of the amazing projects that are out there. Um, I'm just letting a few more people into the meeting and I wanna, <laughs> I wanna know how many people out there are familiar with the uh, Car Talk radio show. Uh, there should be a raise your hand feature. I'm not sure if you have it or you can just raise your hand if you're familiar with the Car Talk radio show. Uh, so hopefully you are because we, you know, stealing their idea with this uh, series of talks. Keep it fun, learn something, try to get some ex experts in here that can tell us about some things that we think you'll all be interested in. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Jason Sukup, who is uh, part of an organization called Manchester Moves. And he's gonna tell us a lot of things about some of the projects that are going on in Manchester. He's gonna focus on a, a project that we're referring to as the Manchester Rail with Trail project. Um, he's gonna talk a little bit about the Manchester Heritage Trail, the Granite State Rail Trail and other projects too. So after Jason goes through his presentation, um, then we'll open it up and we'll have people, people will have the ability to ask questions. So um, at this point, Jason, I'm going to, I'm going to stop talking and um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Manchester Moves? Great. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Uh, well, thanks for having me on and, and my sidekick here is Garrett McClarty. Um, he's uh, my partner in crime in, in this particular effort. Um, and he's agreed to come and share some of this information with this group as well. And so we're excited to be able to um, talk about it. We're excited to talk about what we've learned over the past uh, year, some of, the, uh, some of our findings, some of our opportunities we've uncovered for the city as it relates to uh, walking and biking and uh, non-motorized mobility, um, and so we're we're pretty excited about it. Um, so the graphic that you can see here is um, an artist's rendition of of a vision we have, and it's not just our vision, but it's it's a vision that's been kicking around Manchester for nearly 15 years, and it's a vision of an interconnected rail trail network that meets in the heart of Manchester, and so. Uh, a local artist drew this, and as you can see, the green lines that come from the north, west, east, and south in this graphic are completed rail trails. And so they come from, in the east, they come from nearly Portsmouth. In the south, they come from Salem all the way up to the city. In the west, they come from New Boston, right through Goffstown, right into the city. And then to the north, we, we pick up around Concord. So what you see in the middle is, is an area where rail, tra rail trails are not. And, and that was a question we asked ourselves last summer after we had traveled around a lot uh, in New Hampshire and the rest of New England. A lot of these towns, um, notably Keene would be our, our closest one, um, had an interconnected system of rail trails that we took our families on that were incredible. They were great. Uh, we could take them for about 15, 20 miles on rail trails, stop in town for lunch, and we could hop back on and 
safely ride to our next destination, and it was wonderful. So as we had to settle down into Manchester like everyone else last year, uh, we, we kind of wondered where our rail trails were. I'm like, well, where's our rail trails? Like, what's, what's the deal? And so we started doing a lot of homework. And, um, and so that's what we have to share with you today. Um, so this is our organization. The, the graphic on the right tells it all. We're, we've got families, we've got kids, we've got um, a pretty diverse group. And we've also got some brain power and some people in the city who care about these things who are helping us as well. Um, so this is the board for Manchester Moves. It's an organization that's going into its 13th year. Um, and so that's us. So here's a little bit of timeline of what our history is. Our history, I say ours, Manchester Moves. So in 2008, it was founded by two guys who, who, who took this project on as a result of the Manchester Master Plan um, to convert the abandoned rail lines into an interconnected set of rail trails through the city. Uh, so they completed engineering studies and they, they did fundraising and they, they put their plans together and they were able to do a lot of great work. Um, they were able to connect to Goffstown via the Piscataqua Bridge um, that they helped fundraise to get the match money to get in place. Um, and they, they had a plan to get us north and they had a plan to get us south and they had a plan to get us east. Um, so a lot of some of those plans came to be. Um, but the key plan that didn't come to be was the north south route, also known as the Heritage Trail. So the Heritage Trail is the part of our city that would start in Bedford um, on the west side of the Merrimack River. It would cross the Merrimack River and it would go north uh, through the city, through the mill yard, up um, past Southern New Hampshire University and on to Hookset and ultimately Concord. So the, the riverfront. So the, to get that piece of trail done, we needed one of two things to happen. The railroad would need to abandon that route the same way they abandoned so many others and that would have been easy. Um, but they didn't, um, they kept it. And they, um, they run a freight uh, train through there a couple times a week, uh, moving heavy things that need to be moved by train. So they are still there and, and Manchester Moves engaged in meaningful conversations with Pan Am Railways and begged and pleaded for access to a small piece of that transportation corridor to do this rail trail. And they said, no. <laughs> so they went back again and again and they said no. <laughs> and so Manchester Moves decided that that was never going to become a thing. It just wasn't going to become a thing. And so they were getting ready to dissolve last year. They had had plans to transfer some of their, their cash balance to another rail trail group that could maybe do something with it. And then we had some big news last year. So Pan Am announced that they were going to sell themselves and they found a buyer. They found a buyer called CSX Railways out of Jacksonville, Florida. And CSX Railways is a really big transportation company that has a history of doing rail with trail in other parts of the country. Um, and even in urban settings like Washington, DC. So there was an opportunity. There was an opportunity to complete a plan that was growing dust and mold to finally give the rail trail system in Manchester the, the light of day that, that many people had fundraised for and fought for. So that's where we're at today. So this slide tells some of the things we've done in the last year. A lot of words, I won't go into it, but we've got a very active board. Uh, there's 12 people from the uh, city area businesses and residents who care deeply about this stuff. Um, we love trains. I, I know some of the train people around this call as well, and we love trains. And we also love rail trails. And so we, we, uh, we've done a lot of research into what it could look like to see rail with trail along the river that goes up to Concord. Can you just uh, explain briefly what rail with trail is and just to make sure that everybody knows what that is? Hmm. It gives uh, rail with trail is... Um, a recognition that rail is a good transportation idea. It can be a good transportation idea. And that it's not that the idea of using uh, rail right-of-ways for human power transportation 
is not an either or uh, proposal to get rid of trains or to, you know, to keep trains or to have a rail trail, but rather there is a sufficient right of way to allow for future use as well as current use of rail and also have within that same right of way space um, a viable human powered transportation corridor. Okay, so it's, in, it's typically a situation where there's either an active rail corridor or a potentially active rail corridor with a, you know, human powered uh, corridor directly next to it. So either a rail trail or a walking path. And I've, I've certainly experienced many of those situations in my travels. So I, I know they do exist. Yeah, yeah they, they exist and they can be safely done and they can be nicely done. Okay. And we have another, right, we have a few more slides that talk a little bit more about what rail with trail is, where it is and um, ways to get it to get it done. This next slide is a picture of our city in the 1960s. And we took this from a, a book that came out last year um, by a local author, Rick Kafori. It's called Queen City Rails. Um, and this is a picture of, of the city and its rail network in 1960. So I want to call your attention to the right side of the picture because that is a, a section of land where our ballpark is now. And so um, you could probably hardly notice that land now um, because it has been developed. Uh, that's where the Fisher Cat uh, Stadium is. Um, and that's where the, the rail trail and the pedestrian bridge is on the, uh, the south side of that photo. Um, this, this picture, this graphic here is um, to set the historical context for this discussion, because we're talking about railroads, we're talking about a rail network, we're talking about Northern New England. And, and the question is like, why, why here? Like, why, why would we need to build a pedestrian corridor on a rail corridor? How do these things fit together? And the answer is topography. So if you've ever rode your bike, you know that hills matter. And the railroad companies knew that 150 years ago too. And so wherever they built the railroads, they followed the path of least resistance. They followed, followed riverbeds, they looked for valleys, they built things where the train didn't have to go up hills. And so the, the train corridor, the, the valleys and the rivers were a natural place to build railroads. They're also a natural place to have pedestrian corridors. Uh, we live on the north side of, of this river up here and uh, my wife bikes to work each day, so does Garrett. Um, and it's uphill both ways. It, <laughs> so they, they go from the hospital, it is uphill both ways. It takes them about 20 minutes. Um, and it's a good act, it's a good workout. I mean, they don't mind the workout, it's a good workout. Um, but if the rail trail network was here, they would go south along the, the railroad and they would turn at the switching station at the right and they would get onto the Rockingham Rail Trail and one and a half miles later they would hit the hospital and then they would, you know, they'd be at work and it'd be mostly flat the whole way. So topography matters. So that's, that's the key of this slide. And thinking about those who are less, uh, less inclined to want to sweat on their way to work and don't have a shower necessarily. Yeah, that idea of providing lower barriers for people to use active transportation. All right, this here is a picture of the original rail with trail, the first, the very first in New Hampshire. I know it's a bold claim, it's a very bold claim, but this picture came out from the His, uh, Manchester Historical Society. The building to the right is a, uh, it's a train station that still exists today. It's on West Webster Street. It's a private residence. She's been there since 1978. She's 82 years old. So she probably won't need it forever. And maybe it could be a museum someday. Um, but notice the trail to the left of the train. Notice the river to the left of the trail. So in this photo, in the mid 1800s, the people of Manchester loved the river. They loved it. There was a trail that went right along it, right north and it lived very, very comfortably with the train right next to it. 
some more pictures of the historical context. So um, the question is, is there enough room? Could both really go together? We look at old pictures, and these two are compliments of uh, Queen City Rails and Rick Cafori in his book. Um, it used to be a double track. People who have looked at this from an engineering perspective will say that you've got room for three tracks in much of it. There may be a bottleneck or two that needs to be engineered, um, but that could certainly be figured out. Oh, so what's this picture of? So there's room for both. So infrastructure changes with transportation demands over time. This picture is uh, Canal Street in the mill yard. On the right, you'll notice the train track, the new train track that was laid. That's actually above the old canal. So that used to be a canal. They filled in the canal and they put in dirt and they put in a new train track and then they took out the train track to the left of the picture where the train is. They took out both double tracks, made it into a road. It's a road now, that's now Canal Street. And the train track is to the right. Much of that green space still exists today. And there's also plenty of room on the, on the road as well. This is the master plan from 2009, the vision to have an interconnected network. Um, there it is, the spine right up the river. Um, and then the, you know, the, the west route out to the Piscataqua Trail, the east route to the Rockingham, uh, the south Manchester, which is like a southeast route out of the city that goes to the airport, and then the south route that would get you to Bedford. So this has been planned for for a long, long time. This is just a, a closer graphic. Um, so this picture shows, you know, what the plan was. The progress that's been made on this is, is fairly minimal since 2009. If you wonder which of these dotted lines has closed, the Rockingham Trail made progress last year. It made it, I think, a couple more miles west over under Route 93, and now ends at about Elliott Hospital. Yeah. Right so, that's, so that's a great thing. Uh, there's 1.6 miles left of that trail to get us to the city core, which is in planning documents, and there are plans to get that done. It's complex because there's 13 streets to cross and, 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 and they want to combine it with a sewer project and there's other details around that project, but that will connect to downtown in the near future. Um, and then the South Manchester Trail is all planned for that will get done in the next couple of years as well. What we can't get done until we get permission from whoever owns the land is the most important north-south link. So right Hold up- on one here. second, Jason, can I jump in? Oh yeah. And this picture that we're looking at, the so the dotted lines are to be completed and the solid lines are already completed. Maybe I missed that. Yes. Yep. Okay, got yep. it. Thank you. And and in the middle, if you look at this, I don't, can you guys see the mouse here? Yes. So that Rockingham Trail is now completed to right about where that mouse is. Right, right. Yeah, I've been on that. It's fantastic. Very nice. Okay, thanks. All right. So we're going to zoom out. We're going to zoom out to the east coast of the United States. And so this is a graphic of the East Coast Greenway, uh, 3,000 miles of rail trail from Maine to Florida. And so mu much of it's been done, much of it's planned for. Um, this is going to be a full reality soon. And, um, and so how does New Hampshire fit into that? Well, let's see. Let's zoom into New England. So in New England, this is New England's rail trail network. And so uh, much of this has already been completed or is planned for. The solid blue is already done. The dotted stuff is planned. Um, and so in the, in the future, this is a vision for a fully connected system of trails. Notice New York all the way on the left of that picture. That is uh, part of the Empire State Trail um, that got a, a major, head, a major uh, boost this past year for getting done. And, um, and so this, this New England network is, is an awesome thing. You'll be able to go from Burlington all the way to Boston um, through Manchester um, ultimately onto the East Coast Greenway into Florida. We'll zoom in a little more into Manchester. So in, 
Locally in New Hampshire, we have what's called the Granite State Rail Trail. This is a contiguous 125 mile trail that goes from Lebanon all the way to Salem. Um, it is a stress free route that's off road um, that you can ride. Um, you can ride all the way through, except, except, except one thing. What are we missing? Yeah, Concord, in Concord, you have to take your bike onto the river and then come down to Manchester and uh, with some kind of float and then you can get back on the rail trail. A float? Yeah. How are you gonna do that? Well, it depends on what you have. Well, I know you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 has a, he has an inflatable raft that he brings. And yeah. do, you, do you put the bike on the raft? Yeah, the bike can go on the raft. I'm the Garrett. And just a few, <laughs> things, a few dams to go over. It's called a pack raft. But for most people, it'd be nice to just be able to pedal their bike from Concord down to Manchester instead of floating it. Yeah. Well, I believe the I believe the point is there is a significant gap between Concord and Manchester, right? That's oh correct. yes, yes. Sorry, yeah. I had to say it. Now you can ride that, and if you would like to <laughs> trespass, and if you have a bike with really wide, fat tires and ride on the railroad ballast, but uh other than that it's it's a missing link yeah so people who have been working on this stuff for many many years it's not even an unknown they they have a name for it it's called the big gap it's the concord to manchester gap and so we've everyone has been okay with that because there's been other things to do and so everyone says well let's just keep doing what we can do and and someday we'll figure out the gap and well the day is here the gap has to be figured out because Concord's figured out their thing and they've, they're getting closer and Londonderry is nearly done and, and all the pieces on the West are done and all the pieces on the East are done and the East Coast Greenway is getting done and everything is done except for the big gap. So we still wanna know where's our rail trail? Like where's, we just want a rail trail. Like we wanna ride our bikes to work. We wanna use it with safely with our family. Like other places are getting it. I don't want to leave Manchester. I want to stay in Manchester. It's a good place. So, all right. So they figured it out. Someone has an idea. So this is a map of the railroads in the state. And so all the red are abandoned lines, all abandoned. Plenty of room for rail trails, right? The blue are active. So they're active freight lines. They're freight lines. They move big things like coal and cement and telephone poles usually twice a week. Um, and the red ones can be converted to rail trails. Many of them have, especially in areas where there aren't people. Um, but we have people here. And, and so this particular line is not abandoned yet. So they figured out how can they get the Granite State Rail Trail from Lebanon to Salem through Manchester without having to go through Manchester because the railroad won't let us. Um, what can you do? Well, we could do, we could do this. We could go from Concord, we could go west to Henniker, through Dunbarton, into Goffstown. Um, then we could connect into Manchester and we'll do it that way. And that's a way to do it. Except if you're trying to get to work, it's a little bit of a detour on a bike. Like how much longer would that take me? Yeah, so the idea of uh, recreation versus transportation. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do you have on your hands? <laughs> so adding 30, 20 miles to your route on a bike is a non-starter. You just can't unless you're on like, I don't know, unless you just ride your bike for a living. But some of us, most of us have jobs. <laughs> so, all right. So it's not a good idea. Not a good idea. There, there are also some ideas to maybe put it on the roads. We can put it on the roads. We could connect it on the roads. And that's a great idea too. Maybe you're Garrett or someone, but I'm not going to let my kids ride. Yeah, that. you can you can dress appropriately. Yes. <laughs> but still, people will almost hit you. You're like, uh, actually, on my way over here today, somebody was a little aggressive. So, yeah. How, how do we do this uh, in a way that that really removes the barriers again? And 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 this whole piece, it's wonderful to have this. If we get this all yellow line done, I will be very very excited. Um, but most of the people live on the blue line, uh, north-south line, Concord, Hooksit, Manchester, Merrimack, Nashua. 
Um, so connecting that seems like a pretty incredible opportunity for transportation. And yeah, anyway, oh. smart cars are ways out yet and not nearly as efficient as a bicycle either. So yeah. All right, so here we are. Now we got a vision, we got a plan. What are we gonna do? We gotta stop belly aching about it. What are we gonna do about it? So Manchester Rail with Trail, it's, it's a vision, it's a project where a rail trail would exist, coexist with the current freight train and maybe someday a commuter rail. I mean, we might get a commuter. I would like that too. You can hop on the train when you get tired. Um, so this, this vision would have 13 miles of rail with trail, which is the north-south route, the red thing along the river, and then eight miles that are rail trail on abandoned things. And there would even be, um, there's a couple miles in there that would be on converted roads as well. Um, but it's 21 miles of a, it's a system of trails through Greater Manchester connecting the network. Um, and also that, I didn't say it, but um, it would connect the Granite State Rail Trail and it would connect us to the East Coast Greenway. All right, so what's a rail trail? So this is a picture of one. Um, they, they can have a fence between them. They don't always, you could separate it by grade, um, depending on the type of train that's going through, you know, the type of um, barrier might be different, um, but it's, it's a multi-use trail that's adjacent to or, or within an active rail corridor um, that provides uh, local transportation options for all people. There's over 400 of these things in the country right now. Um, so it's not a new concept. Um, there is, there's two in New Hampshire. One is, is the WOW Trail up in Laconia. And then there's another one on some, um, some, some small train somewhere. Um, but that isn't really the relevant comparison for Manchester, especially in a place where people hope to have commuter lines someday. And so we wanted to find a, a comparable um, situation of rail with trail nationally. And, and where we landed there was Washington, D.C. So Washington, D.C. has the Metro North Line um, or the Metro, Metro North Trail, MBT Trail. And that is a rail trail that goes along an active commuter line. And, and so it's an urban setting, similar to Manchester. Um, and the rail operator there is CSX. Um, and so a lot of similarities there. Um, and so we're, we're hopeful that this, this plan will also fit in our city. So what's a rail with trail? So the picture on the left, that's actually your wife. That's Katrina. Yep. Um, that's in the winter. Um, so you can't tell in this picture, but the railroad is to her left. In this case, the barrier is trees. There's trees there. And to the right is the river. And so that is a scenario of what is rail with trail. So it's not always like, flying cars going by or flying trains going by things. There's often situations where the trail can sit um, you know, 80 feet away from, from the train. There are situations where it'll be as close as 20 feet uh, that would be separated by safety things. What it is not is the picture on the right. Our rail corridor in Manchester now, um, prior to cleaning it up in the last month, had no fewer than 100 people who were living on the tracks. Yeah. It was, it was actually their home. It has become the place that is unpoliced. It's become the place for um, homelessness. And I think at least once a month, someone's dying down there, right? Yeah, it seems uh, quite often it gets, uh, gets in the news for negative reasons. And not because of the train either. They're dying because they're like blowing up or they're overdosing or overdosing or, you know, the terrible things are happening down there. It's like, it's not a good place. And so it's this area of blight in the city, quite frankly. And, um, and so as someone who lives here, someone who's raising my kids here, um, it's got to change. It's got to change. All right. I can't move my presentation. Huh. Maybe an arrow. There we go. All right. So does this thing have a name? Yes, it has a name. So it's called the Heritage Trail. So the Heritage Trail is the north-south route through the city. Um, it's a long story on how it got its name and I'll try to be brief. Um, but about 30 years ago, there were people in the city who imagined a, 
a linear park from the Massachusetts border up to the Vermont border that generally followed the Merrimack River, similar to the Appalachian Trail that people could hike on. And so the Heritage Trail actually predates rail trails. It, it came about before rail trails and people from uh, state parks and DOT sold this thing at Rotary Club meetings to, to the towns. And the idea was that each town would construct their own section of trail and they would connect to each other. And eventually we would have a, a linear park that people could hike on. And so large sections of this got built specifically in the big cities like uh, Manchester, um, Nashua and Concord. And so there's large sections of really recreation trail that are outside the rail corridor, albeit close, um, that, that have trails. And, and so that's what it is and that's what it's come to be called. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take us down the river quickly. I'll be quick. So we're gonna start up in Hookset. We're gonna start at this beautiful pedestrian bridge that was constructed in 2017, it's called the Lilac Pedestrian Bridge. You can get to it from Roby's Country Store. Um, you can have a sandwich there and then you can cross the river on this, this trail, this train trestle. Um, and then you can come to the train track, but you can't go on the train track. <laughs> it's a bridge to nowhere. Well, unless you're standing on one side of the river and wanna to go to the Roby's or you're standing on Roby's side and wanna come across and look at the train track. There's a monument over there. Yes. There's a monument. And some graffiti. The graffiti is nice. <laughs> yes. I don't, I didn't put a picture of the graffiti in there. Um, so anyway, this, this pedestrian bridge, I don't know what it cost them, but it must've been pretty expensive. Yeah, a couple million. So, so they wanted it and they had a vision for it to, to do more as we did too. Um, so someday it could connect. Um, I'll, we'll go down, we'll go down this here. So up top, this is Roby's Country Store, this bridge, we're gonna travel south, a couple miles, a few miles, till we hit the curve, Southern New Hampshire University is down here, and we're gonna go under I-93, and we're gonna keep going around the river um, and to the north end of Manchester. And this is a drone picture we took because we didn't trespass, we did not wanna trespass. Maybe, So we, but we didn't want to, yes. So we got a we got a drone. <laughs> we got a drone, and we were far enough away from the airport. We were not violating their rules, um, and we got this image. And so we got an image of of what could be rail with trail. And we also got a picture of the Heritage Trail. So on the left side of this picture over here is the Heritage Trail that we were able to build. It's 1.6 miles of trail build. We were able to refurbish it because it's on city and state lands, and it follows along the train track. And so it's our heritage trail. It's not much, but we love it because it's all we got. It's all we got. And so we love it. We take our kids on it and we get to look at the railroad sometimes. And we've even cleared some of these trees out so we could see the river. And everyone's pretty happy about that. Yeah, no, there's uh, people a lot seen, of people out there on that section. Because people haven't seen the river in a long, long time. And so right now there are homeless people and in a twice a week train that get to enjoy this section of land. And so we think that's a shame. And there are some sections, there's some sections in here that um, would be on utility access roads that are parallel to the railroad as well. So just of north course. of this picture, this picture is looking south, just north of this picture, you get to Chauncey Avenue. At the end of Chauncey Avenue, there's actually a uh, heading towards a sewer plant from either side or access roads that you don't even have to be on the railroad corridor. So that get frequent use and appear to have bikes and ATVs using them, as well as maybe horses and walking people and dogs, so. Yeah, they're used quite a bit. But they're not yeah. well connected. Yeah, they're used quite a bit. Um, so we'll keep going. So our, our rail with trail, the way we've marked it out in this example, would it be to the left of the railroad or would it be to the right? That's for an engineer to figure out. Um, but once you take the trees out that haven't been cut down in a long time, um, you'll realize that there's there's a lot of land there. And actually along this section of the railroad, in these trees is where that picture where Katrina was was at. There is a, a clearly defined and high 
used enough to keep the brush down trail heading towards Manchester until there's a spot where it gets too narrow and uh, the railroad is next to the river there. So. All right, so this is our beloved Heritage Trail North um, that we cleared up in the fall of 2020. Uh, we got to cross country ski it all winter and now we're using it for bikes in the, this time of year. Um, this is a picture of about the same area. That's my dog trespassing. I'm not sure the rules on that. <laughs> um, I did call her back soon after that. Um, and so we're looking south to the city right now. And just this is to give you a sense, is, is there room? Yes, there's, there's room for both or a whole bunch of things. All right, so this, oh, go back to this one, the Heritage Trail North. Manchester Moves got to take, um, got to participate in a, um, a park revitalization project this spring at Stark Park. Um, and we were able to help fund the development of a nature trail system with a whole bunch of um, fun bridges and things like that. Um, and it connects, it would serve as a connector trail to the Heritage Trail. Um, well, it does connect to the Heritage Trail already, mm -hmm. but it would also connect to our rail with trail when we get that mm -hmm. and take us up to Concord and, and Bedford someday. Um, all right, so we're leaving the north end. We're gonna go a little farther south and now we're getting into um, the city. And so right up here is the Amaskeg um, Bridge and the <coughs> waterfall. Um, and then the, these are some pictures from the engineering studies we've done of you know, where, where the trail would go, where the, where the grade crossings are. Um, you know, and this is, you know, a lot of people are curious, well, how, how do you get through the city? So the yellow line is the trail, I believe, right? Yeah. 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 How do you get through the city? And so this is uh, one way that we would get through the city. Uh, this is another way we would get through the city. We envision two ways to get through the city. One that would um, go along the riverfront and would dovetail into some other plans that uh, some other groups are working on. And then one that would use the green space over here. If you look at this section of land here, um, the train track is over here, the trail we have here, and then there's still like all this land like all the way down here. There's like, there's so much land there, it's ridiculous. Um, and there's some ideas on Canal Street revitalization, some traffic calming, some, you know, Canal Street does not receive, does not get the amount of traffic that would require it to be as wide as it is. Um, and so what it does right now is encourage people to drive double the speed limit yeah. versus uh, having traffic calming in a trail and those things. All right. So now we're downtown Arms Park. Um, the Notre Dame Bridge. Now there's our sign for our beloved Heritage Trail. It's a little old, um, but this was a section of trail that has been maintained over time. This section, I think it's been maintained probably because it was paved. I'm not sure why, but it has been like the point, you know, eight. It's the, it's the part where there's somebody had put up signs, you know. Well, there's actually, there's <laughs> signs all over the city, um, but none of them really make a whole lot of sense. Some of them yeah. are right along where there's no sidewalk and there's a curb and they say heritage trail there alongside the road, so. Yeah. So it's- I, I just wanna say that I totally agree with that because I used to work in the mill yard and this was our, you know, our lunchtime walk was through this area. And I would frequently see these signs, heritage trail, and it, it really was very confusing. Um, so I, one of the best things I'm getting out of this presentation, Jason, is the uh, understanding of, you know, why I see these signs all over the place, you know, in Nashua and Bedford and Manchester that say Heritage Trail. I'm, I'm so relieved to finally understand what they all mean. So thank you. Well, let me, I guess I never gave you the, the, the final point on the Heritage Trail. So the Heritage Trail as a precursor to rail trails, like the Heritage Trail was evolving before anyone knew we really could have rail trails. And so once rail trails started taking off, the need for a heritage trail went away for most people, for most towns, except for the towns that still had the freight line that went through it. And, and so they never adopted a rail trail. Yeah, well, the attention was turned to the whole concept of rail trails. A linear park is attractive. And, like people I, want a linear park. And I think there's some maybe misconceptions out there that um, 
all of these things are good for recreational purposes and have no other point. And the understanding that they that that having disjointed pieces, you know, in the public eye and in, in maybe public consensus of understanding that something that, that is disjointed is good, but is so far um, removed from something that's totally connected and, and what it can serve and the purpose it can serve as for transportation and for what it does to communities in looking at the, the towns that are, have a trail and the, the uh, commerce they bring as well. Correct, because you know I, I commuted on the Goffstown Rail Trail and the Manchester Rail Trail for 12 years. That was my commute into work and I was and I continue to remind people that they're not just recreational corridors, they're also transportation corridors. At my job in the mill yard, if you didn't get to work with your car by nine o'clock, you sometimes did not get a parking space because car parking was so limited. So uh, once I started riding my bike, you know, that whole issue just went away. So there are just many benefits. All right, we're continuing north. Uh, here we're south. South, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, north or south. South. <laughs> This is underneath the Granite State Bridge. We're standing about at the Foundry Restaurant. And so this is an area where there could be what we call an underpath that goes underneath the Granite State Bridge. It's six lanes of traffic. So to cross it, there is a plan that the city just submitted to put a bridge over it. Either is okay, but this, is, this would be a good option as well and would tailor into another plan that is um, working its way out in the city. That's Garrett halfway under there. I mean, the, the amazing thing about this is you go down these, you know, somebody put all this work into these stairs going down and terracing it down to there. And then it's clear that people use it. There's a clear defined path under there. As you can see now, here's under there. And uh, unfortunately, at this point, the only people who use it are intrepid explorers and people who are generally um, wanting to be left alone. And therefore, it's made it so that those you know, I think especially an, an unfortunate reality in, in our world is that, say, for my wife, she feels much less comfortable going under there by herself than I feel um, because of the, the milieu that is there. So trying to say, okay, what does it take to take this space that is used, is accessible, is viable, puts you right along the river, and instead of being frustrated by the traffic that's there, being excited about the positive traffic that could be there if you have families and kids and, and commuters and all that using it. So this property is owned by Southern New Hampshire University, which also has its campus, you know, north of here. And so we're having, um, we're starting to bring them into the conversation as well. They're very interested in seeing these links connected. All right, so we've left um, downtown. We, we went from the ballpark. Um, and this next section is, I think it's, it's about a mile and it's completed, it's rail trail that is done and it ends about at Sundial Avenue. And so that's about at um, uh, Elliott River's Edge if you're driving by car, you know, that's about where that is underneath by the river. By Velcro. By Velcro. Yeah. Uh, all right, so this is uh, our hands across the Merrimack Bridge, uh, just for also a reference, um, that's how we would go west. The Gosstown Rail Trail. That's right. You yep. know, you got to go over that bridge every day. <laughs> and and you know, this picture is interesting <laughs> because under the um, when you get to Sundial Avenue, um, so this the picture here on that we're seeing is actually 293, I think, right? The southern side of 293. And so under Sundial, you can continue, and that's one of those places that seems very viable to share use with a road because the road is a very, very quiet road at this point. And then it goes down and accesses what we're seeing, that little quarter under 293, is another section of very well-maintained um, utility road. Here it is, right here. Yeah. So this section is three miles of trail, a lot of it's city property because it's sewer. And we're actually talking with them this week. We may be able to do this one this year. Yeah. Um, this is three miles that um, could be done quickly. And it, this goes all the way um, from the Elliott past Pine Grove Cemetery and to the train trestle that goes into Bedford. And so we think we think we can get this done this year because there's some funding available and 
And there's already signage there for saying no camping and no motorized access or whatnot. And it's again, cl clearly highly used by those who are very local to it that know about it. But if somebody wasn't investigating and looking at topo maps and, and trying to find it, they're not gonna find it. And for those that come out on the end of Sundial Avenue, unless they know to keep going and wind around to there, they're not gonna find it. And yet it connects, as you see to the south, once you do, if you do cross the railroad bridge there, you're connecting to the Bedford section of the Heritage Trail. So, um, and it goes behind Pine Grove Cemetery, which has the disc golf course right there and access to that. Um, so yeah, it's a great, great Southern uh, park in Manchester. All right. So we started at a train trestle and we're finishing at a train trestle. So this is the train trestle that again crosses the Merrimack again one time. Um, it's an uh, old double track. One track has been taken out. It's still an active freight line. Um, I don't know. Did you see any signs saying we couldn't cross it? Uh, there's, there's, interestingly enough, there's signs from one coming from either the north or south, but not from the other side. And it's, again, highly, clearly used often by um, pedestrians and bikes. And it immediately connects to the Heritage Trail. So... And so from here, we crossed, we went north along the river again, we went under the highway, um, and then we were stopped by a fence. There was eagles nesting. Yes. Eagles nesting. Um, we were told not to go any further, but had we been able, if the eagle was not there, we would have gotten to Whole Foods, and that would have been cool. But the, <laughs> but the, eagle, <laughs> the eagle was if not for that eagle. <laughs> we think we think there might be other reasons it's, it's why Bedford wants to keep Manchester out, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the fence is very interesting from the perspective that um, right next to it uh, on the non-river side is uh, tennis courts and apartment buildings and all these things. And yet, for some reason, somebody is concerned that a few people walking and biking, you know, 20 feet further from uh, anyway, are going to disturb these eagles in the trees. It so was it, only for the winter. We should go back. It, it is a little, a... but there is a little suspect in terms of where fences are placed and some of those things that appear that there was some agenda in keeping that section closed. We found well, obviously it's the Eagles' agenda. <laughs> we, well, we, we shouldn't be telling you this, but we've seen bald eagles up on our North Heritage Trail. Oh, they're too, everywhere. We're not going to tell anyone because we don't want them to close it down on us. I haven't seen any fluttering around the ground next to the trail. Oh, so. Jason, how many more slides do you have? Because I want to make sure we have time for questions. All done. You're all done? I'm all done? Oh, wait. Is, so, you know, this is the call to action. So how can you help if you're here and you're like, yeah, this is cool. What are you guys doing? Like, how can we help you? There's a couple things you can do. The first thing, risk your life every day like we do. Like, get on your bike and ride to work. I know some of us are going to die. It's just got to happen. <laughs> it's just got to happen. Jason. And, and until we, we leave the recreation bucket into clearly transportation, we're not going to get the kind of attention we need. So that's step one. And then step two, you can go to our website, sign up for our newsletter. Um, we keep our, our people in the distribution updated on how we can get you to come to action. And we're figuring out how to do that in the same way other towns have whether it's you know, writing letters to your, your lawmakers or um, coming for a cleanup day, we'll keep you updated. And then if you really want to roll up your sleeves and really get dirty, um, join us on the second- uh, I think that's Thursday. It is Thursday. But it's the second Thursday of every month. The date's right, June 10th. Um, and my email and phone number's there as well. So, so I'm meeting back. virtually or in person? Uh, we've been meeting virtually. We're going to meet in yeah. person next month, though. We're going to meet in our office, which is above the bookery on Elm Street, and we will be meeting in Oh, person. nice. Yep. Great space. Yep. Very nice. So well, that's I, it. That's I, all, you know, <laughs> all we have. I know we took my mind is, is blown. I just learned so much, and, you know, I, I thought I knew a lot about Manchester Rail Trail System, and uh, but it really, that was incredibly informative. And um, I do want to know if people on the line have questions. Um, if you do, I think, let's see, please use either the chat feature or the uh, raise your hand feature. And why don't we go ahead and um, see if anybody on the line has some questions. Let's see. If you, if you have a question and you 
say so in the chat, I will unmute you and then you can speak. <laughs> so I want to know if if anybody does have questions. I'm looking. And I don't see any. Did we lose people? A couple people did ask if we're going to make the presentation available, and I think the answer is yes, right, Jason? You're, are you okay with if we share yeah. your presentation with everyone, and yeah, um, we'll figure out how to make that happen? Yeah, yeah. This is a public good, and it will be a public trail. We good. Need the um, exposure we can get. Great. And I, um, yeah, I'm not seeing any questions unless I'm missing something. Uh, Paul, Dave, yeah, you got oh. a hand hand up from Rich Westhoff. Thank you. Oh, now I see it. Hang on. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Rich. I was on. I was able to unmute myself. Maybe oh, I have like, okay. I'm Good. like have a have a superpower or something. Oh. So, um, the, it looked like to me the bottom, the south end of your trails go in the wrong direction. Um, I'm, I just wanted to ask about like your connection to the Granite State Trail over by the, to the Londonderry Trail. So that, that already happens. That would happen. Um, yeah, that's a good graphic. So our system splits at the ballpark and goes south and, oh, so and southeast. Yes. And uh, it shows the, you can go. Go to this one, that one, there. So um, do you see how it goes south here? And this would get us to Bedford. In the middle, if you, if you went kind of southeast, this would be along Willow Street, past the Mall of New Hampshire, um, and onto the airport in Londonderry. Mm -hmm. And so that's the segment of trail that is um, either been completed or will be completed in the next couple of years, that would be the official connection to the Granite State Rail Trail. And there's, there's some, there's, you know, we've talked a lot about various options. So there's, there's the other piece that down by the airport, just kind of at the south side of this, there is clear uh, utility paths under, under uh, power lines that has just a couple sections keeping it from totally connecting the trails where people walk and the utility company has said they don't mind if people use that. So the idea of connecting again at east west section further south, um, just at the bottom side of this, basically right at the north side of the airport. So that, yeah, just another connection to give it as many connections as possible. Does that answer your question, Rich? I think it does. There is another question that came in, in the chat box and it says, does the city have any plans to use any of the federal stimulus, stimulus 45 million toward bike friendly initiatives? If so, what is on the short list of projects? And I, I don't know if you can answer that, Jason, but if- any I, 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 don't know the, I don't know the official answer on that because I don't think officially they've said, I think they've collected a lot of input at this point okay. on how to spend that, but I don't think anyone has officially said. Um, I know for, for us, we, we have researched funding and we think that this project would cost us, uh, the city and, and the community between 10 and $15 million to put the trail next to the railroad. Um, but there, the money's out there for this type of thing. To connect a, a metropolitan area with trail like this, the money's a no brainer. The money will come. Um, our uh, Congressman Chris Pappas, he just sponsored reintroduced a bill that um, that provides exactly this type of money and the minimum project is $25 million. Um, so the money is there, that's not the question. The question is, will the property owner allow us access? And we've had some help from our NH DOT to have those conversations with, uh, with the railroad and the city would love to have it, of course. Um, but until we get yes, um, we're not even looking for the money any farther than knowing that it's there. Um, but to answer your question for other things, there, 
This is just the rail trails. The city is doing a lot of other things on the roads as well. So sidewalks, what we call last mile connections. Like there are other things and probably some of that money will go to that. Yeah, But, but then, I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. I don't know if you guys are familiar, how many of you guys are familiar with some of the input that was requested for the Canal Street uh, stuff. And just the idea of a number of places in Manchester need traffic calming. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you guys live in Manchester, but there's routine, there's streets that are routinely driven at, at 15 to 25 miles an hour over the speed limit, you know, 30 mile an hour posted streets, such as say even the north side of Elm or, or you know, they just put, uh, was it Beach Street just got its uh, other little bike lane. So different things like, and obviously for those of us who are biking, a painted stripe bike lane is, is just a, a very small start towards a the right direction on that because people routinely cross it so either having rumble strips is the next step and then some kind of divider or any you know just trying to say what does it take for people to feel comfortable using walking and biking as a transportation option within you know for us the focus of within manchester because that's where we live i, I do want to ask if anyone on the line because we've still we've still got about 23 people on the line and I'd love to know if any of the people that are on this call have explored any of the sections of these trails that Jason has shown um, you know the Manchester se the segments if you use the raise your hand feature if you've done it or if you're <laughs> this is a shameless plug for one of the projects I'm working on the New Hampshire Rail Trails Challenge if you're participating in the Rail Trails Challenge um, have you explored any of these sections of the Manchester Rail Trail system? So just click your uh, raise your hand up. Oh, I see a couple. Great. Oh, excellent. Okay, good. So I see that there are people on the call who've been doing the New Hampshire Rail Trail Challenge and they're been exploring um, lots of these trails, including uh, the pieces of the Manchester Rail Trail system that are complete. So um, any other questions before we move towards? Uh, ending the call. Jason, are you still on the call? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here. Good. Just I, I would say quiet. if anybody, if anybody's interested in exploring some of these, um, we are more than happy to, uh, and to go with people on bike rides or walks, um, you know, say that mm. the East West uh, finishing one point something miles of the river, um, river's edge to Elliott uh, main campus basically is where that rail line runs, the old rail right, railroad right of way. Um, anyway, there's a lot of these places that I would be, be happy to take people on walks and bikes and um, yeah, trying to, to get that out there to, to say, hey, you want to explore it? Let's go exploring it. Yeah, Garrett has what, what's called a lending library and he's got, oh, I don't know, he's got a lot of bikes. And he's got bikes for little people and old people and people with one leg. He took a guy out with one leg this week. Serious, true story. Yes. Um, and so, um, you know, don't let the equipment be a barrier. If you want to get out, uh, get in contact with Garrett or myself. We usually get out two Saturdays a month um, to you know, experience these things. And that's how we've learned all about all this stuff, quite frankly. And that's how we've been moving a lot of this work forward is those informal get togethers on Saturdays. Great, and I know you had a very successful event in April. I think it was April 24th. You had a big ribbon cutting at Stark Park and it was, it was a beautiful day. It was well attended. And um, a lot of people got to check out that new section of the trail that you had recently improved. Um, and so if, if people do want to check that out, where would you recommend that they park? Like where should they start to check out that section? I would park at Stark Park. Okay. Uh, Stark Park at the on the lower end. You can drive down about halfway down into the park. And yeah. Then and then is there a map available? Yep. Signs and maps are available now. We and where uh, where are they? They're located at the north end and the south end of Stark Park at the where the trail starts. So there's a monument, the grave site, where John Stark is buried. Um, just to the south of them and just to the north of them are two two signs. That will um, tell you about the walk in the woods, which is the trail system on the lower 15 acres of the park. And we have a new uh, new sign and map for the heritage trail that's getting installed this week 
um, that'll be down there and also on River Road at the corner of River Road and Rowell Street. Um, so those are two very good access points. The neighborhoods that are back there in the north end can, they have a couple unique ways to get in through the streets on Chauncey and McCarthy and some other streets as well. But for the general public, I would park at Stark Park um, and, and you can, it's, it's a great um, unexpected urban nature center trail system that a lot of people are out there. I was out there tonight and there were a couple dozen people. So it's good. And the maps are available online through manchestermoves.org. Yeah, we have, um, we have all the rail trails mapped out through Trail Link. On okay, our, so if they search on Trail Link, they'll find it. Great. The Trail Link has all the rail trails for sure. Um, our yeah. website plus our Facebook site has a lot of information. Facebook updates a lot more frequently than the website. Um, so check us out on Facebook. Um, you'll get very frequent updates that way as well. Well, listen, it's it's, it's already past my bedtime. So I'm going to start to end this call. <laughs> and um, thank you again. This was awesome. This is Tom Christensen. I noticed you have a number of people with their hands up. I, oh, I thought, well, that was from when I asked the question about who did the, did I miss some? Hang on. Um, that was from before when I asked to raise your hand. Are there people that have questions at this point? I think you're going to have to wait. Did I make them all go away? I made them all go away. Thanks. All right. Raise your hand if you have a question. <laughs> I screwed that up. Let, let me comment at the end here. All right. As a um, member of the New Hampshire Rail Trail Coalition, um, I, I'm really appreciative of the work that Jason and others have done in moving forward with this effort. And uh, Appreciate your effort, to Paula, for bringing this program to everybody's attention. And being recorded, it will last for a lifetime. Thanks a lot. It will. Thanks Great. Well. So I don't think there are any more questions, but if there are, please email either myself or Jason. I'll make sure everyone has contact information. Uh, ooh. Um, so uh, the other thing is we are going to do more of these. So soon we'll have a schedule listed on the Bike Walk Alliance of New Hampshire website. We're going to have a schedule of our future bike talks or bike and walk talks. And if you have ideas on topics that you guys would like to hear about, we would love to hear that because these have been really successful. I mean, I'm very impressed that we've, you know, had uh, almost 26 people on this call. I think that's great. And we're going to continue to do more probably like once a month if we can pull that off. So um, like I said, you'll start seeing posts and email blasts and Facebook posts about future ones. But uh, I want to thank everybody for attending. And I especially want to thank Jason and uh, Garrett and Clardy for uh, kicking this off. And it was really fun. Yeah, thanks for listening. Okay. Thanks All right. Yeah. Well, good night, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you.